we're asked to find the limit of the sequence given by a sub n. Looking at the theorem below, if a sub n equals the function f of n, and the limit as x approaches to infinity of f of x equals l, then a sub n converges to l, and the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n equals l. This theorem is telling us we determine the limit of a sequence the same way we determine the limit at infinity of a function. Instead of formally defining a function f of x, where f of n equals a sub n, we normally just let the formula for a sub n be a function of n and determine the limit as n approaches infinity. So the limit of the sequence is equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of the quantity 6n minus 6 divided by the quantity 4n plus 8. There are several ways to determine limits at infinity of rational functions. We'll take a look at two methods. For the first method, we'll divide each term in the numerator and denominator by the highest power of x in the denominator, or in our case, the highest power of n in the denominator, and then we'll find the limit at infinity in the new form. So looking at just the denominator, notice how the highest power of n is n to the first, which means to help us determine the limit, we'll divide each term in the numerator and denominator by n. So this will give us the limit as n approaches infinity of 6n divided by n minus 6 divided by n all over 4n divided by n plus 8 divided by n. And now we'll simplify. Well, 6n divided by n simplifies to 6. This fraction does not simplify. 4n divided by n simplifies to 4, and 8 divided by n does not simplify. So now we have the limit as n approaches infinity of 6 minus 6 divided by n all over 4 plus 8 divided by n. Well, notice how the 6 and the 4 are not affected by n. So let's look at these two fractions here. Notice how for both fractions, the numerators are constants, and the denominator contains one factor of n. So as n approaches infinity, the denominator increases without bound, and therefore both fractions approach zero. And therefore this limit is equal to 6 fourths, which simplifies to 3 halves. So because this limit is equal to 3 halves, we now know that a sub n converges two, three halves. This means as we use this formula to generate more and more terms in the sequence, the value of the terms will approach three halves. Before we look at this graphically, let's also show the shortcut for determining the original limit. The shortcut involves looking at the degree of the numerator and denominator. Well, because we have n to the first here and n to the first here, the degree of the numerator is one, and the degree of the denominator is also one. So looking at the shortcut method, because the degree of the numerator and denominator are equal, our limit is case two, where if the degree of the numerator is equal to the degree of the denominator, then the limit of the rational function is equal to the ratio of leading coefficients. The other two cases are, if the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, the limit is equal to zero, if the degree of the numerator is greater than the degree of the denominator, then the limit does not exist. But because we have the same degree in the numerator and denominator, the limit is equal to the ratio of the leading coefficients, which would be six over four, six fourths, which we already know simplifies to three halves. Now let's also look at the sequence graphically. So here's a graph of the sequence where we have n along the horizontal axis and a sub n along the vertical axis. Notice how it does look like the terms in the sequence are approaching a particular value, and they are approaching the value of 1.5, or 3 halves. So this graph does verify our limit is correct. I hope you found this helpful.